Dr. Glassberg, I'm struggling with some of the concepts in your class. How careful should students be of passively accepting an education here at the university? You once came to class and you were said so-and-so in some other class wasn't prepared. Uh, a lot of them aren't prepared, but you have a very high standard of what it means to be prepared. I haven't, I'll bet you the, uh, most of the students in the class thought that that person was prepared or they didn't care. I was the only person who critiqued that professor See at what the I time. Mean? I talked to other classmates and they said, well, I get high marks. I get good <laughs> marks, so why would I care if she's, pre if if she's prepared? See, that's called corruption. And uh, that's like the corruption of the student body. When they themselves, when the students themselves uh, abet improper teaching because it allows them to get high marks, well, the university has fallen into a horrible state of corruption. If you made teaching as high a priority or a higher priority for some people than publishing, this might not happen so much. But if you're under the pressure of publishing or under the pressure of bringing in grant money because the place is systematically underfunded, of course that situation will happen. How does General Studies 300 attempt to teach me as an individual this difficult and sometimes heavy subject matter? It's pretty much like what you were talking about today in class when you were discussing the framework of your own life compared to uh, what, what exists outside the Hutterite community. Uh, it's like the students are all in some kind of Hutterite community called the common way of that's thinking. That's the way I see it. That's exactly it. You see it that way because that's how it is. The understanding from a communications perspective is that these ideas are painful and sometimes incredibly unnerving. How do I write about them and what do I get out of them? There are still places in our society where clear writing about difficult questions is necessary. Like if you're ever going to get married and have a divorce, you're going to need a damn good lawyer and that lawyer will know, have to know how to argue complex issues according to the law. So it's hard. It takes years. Mm -hmm. years and years and years and insofar as you're writing at a, at not at that level and you're getting good marks for it you're not learning very much of anything yeah. it's only when you uh, start writing at this level and you get reflected back to you possibly not such a good mark that you're learning something that ultimately is worth learning like actually if you did this in all your courses f for four years by the time it, were, it was over you would know how to argue and write damn well about anything but unfortunately, it only occurs in one or two classes. So as a result, most students don't. And they just you know, live in a fool's paradise. What is keeping us asleep? It's the first question that we started off in the course with Gilgamesh. Our consciousness creates our reality. The distinct human ability to imagine and to create is somewhat of a snowball effect towards eternal wakefulness. But there's a problem. The wise way of living is to do good. but. Supposing there's a problem. Supposing your mind cannot do that because there's some fundamental limit on your consciousness. The idea is to create within students a foundation of their own cultural assumptions and a context of why Western civilization exists the way that it does. An existence within Western cultural reality is simple enough. But as Glassberg said in part one, this cultural reality is difficult to understand. Now, to unconfuse you, Remember, we've all, these are the three organizing categories representing the three epochs. Faith is the ancient world. Faith is the medieval period, although it starts with Judeo-Christianity in the ancient world, but it's a different tradition. And freedom is everything that starts from the Renaissance. Today's class created the context of true wisdom according to utopia. When our consciousness is not capable of perceiving the possibility of utopia, then we are in a cultural stalemate where our society is not conducive to thought that would allow us to be truly wise. But technically, we do have an amazing ability, yet we still have poverty. And the glaring contradiction of that just doesn't go away. So you begin to wonder, do we have poverty for a reason? Well, there's a pretty obvious reason. It keeps us from being too conscious. Since we talked about Macs and PCs, these devices with their games on them, like, my God, what an incredible distraction. YouTube is a distraction. Like, there's, there's nothing but distraction on steroids, for God's sake. What is it about freedom that scares the pants off of us? Glassberg is trying to create a context of our living history, but in the end, it still resides within our imagination. Among communications students, General Studies 300 is largely known as the weed-out class for the communications and culture faculty. For New TV, I'm Ruben Cheddar.